People receive 121 emails per day. That's not even counting all other text messages, calls, social media notifications, and so many more. You are just one drop in the ocean of notifications your prospects receive. Yet, email is a super powerful channel to reach anyone in the world because 60% of people prefer to respond by email rather than call or text. My name is Yusuf and I started using cold emails 10 years ago as a sales for companies like Google and Amazon. I have since then founded the Scale Lab where we have helped thousands of B2B companies and salespeople just like you to find new clients. And because it matters, I was also featured by Forbes as one of their 30 under 30 entrepreneurs. So, in this free course, I will show you how to write the best cold email template, including some hacks that you can implement right away to generate new leads. And to get you there, this free course is broken down into four modules. Number one, the subject line. This is the first text your prospects will see. And I will show you here my best subject line tips to trigger people's attention. Number two, the intro line. Once your email gets opened, the intro line is what determines whether your prospects read or dismiss your email. It's the first part of your email. Here, I'll share with you my favorite intro line formats that have helped me double my reply rate. Number three, the value add. Now that you have your prospect's attention, I'll show you how you can structure your value proposition to make it compelling enough for someone who doesn't know you yet to actually respond. And finally, the call to action. Closing your email with a solid call to action will allow you to engage prospects consistently. And I will share with you the best method for closing your emails and ensure positive responses. So if you have been hearing no, unsubscribe, stop emailing me, any reply at all, or you're just starting out with cold emailing, this free course is made just for you. Welcome to the Scale Lab. It's now time for you to write emails that will make you stand out from the crowd. If your open rate is low, it's likely that your subject lines are not intriguing enough. In other words, you are not capturing your prospect's attention. Here, I will show you how to write great subject lines that will boost your open rate and give you more chances to actually engage with your prospects. Let's dive right into it. The goal of your subject line is to stand out to intrigue your prospects. And it's important because it's the first text that they will read from you. So keep it short and personalize it. For example, we like subject lines like first name, extra name, which allows you to connect, partnership with company name, for example, if you want to use the company name instead, or coffee first name question mark, as this would be something you would use when you want to connect or catch up with someone. Let's compare two subject line formats now. These are examples that I have actually received. On one hand, we have subject lines like introduction of our consulting service, or we make recruitment easy for companies like company name. On the other hand, we have subject lines like meet next week question mark, question first name. The first ones are unfortunately not personalized, long and salesy. Even if the second one has company name, it is just salesy because it's a pitch. Where the other subject lines are personalized, short and snappy and connecting as they convey a message to connect. Now that you have a better idea of how to structure your subject lines to avoid being salesy or generic, I have also included in the description of this video a free link where you can download 10 great subject lines you can try for yourself. Let me know in the comment section what subject lines stood up for you or feel free to suggest any of your favorite subject lines that other viewers could also use. Next up, we will look at the intro lines. If you get your emails opened, it is now critical to show your prospect that this very email is intended just for them. Otherwise, your email will be thrown in the bin. This is what the intro line is used for, because no one likes to receive a copy-pasted and generic intro like, Hi Sarah, I hope this email finds you well. My name is Yusuf and I work for the Scale Lab where we offer XYZ. Everyone does this and no one ever gets a response. Let's not waste your intro line like this. I will show you how you can write amazing intro lines that will ensure your emails are actually read and not thrown in the bin. Let's get started. The goal here is to establish a connection with your prospect. And it's important because after the subject line, this line helps you ensure your email is actually read. What I recommend is to make it about the prospect, not about you, and to be specific. You can, for instance, mention achievement, talk about the services they offer, or even highlight something you noticed on their profile or website, for example. 
let's compare two intro line formats now. On one hand, we have, hi first name, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Yusuf and I run the Scalab where we help companies to grow and generate leads. On the other hand, we have, hi first name, I loved your LinkedIn poll on sales cycle duration. Shortening them seems like a strong focus at company name. The first one is unfortunately generic as everyone writes the same introduction emails. And also, the intro is about me, not the prospect. So I'm not really making a difference here. The second one on the other hand is specific as I mentioned something the person has done and it's also focused on the prospect, not on me, which really helps me to stand out compared to all other generic emails a prospect receives. I know, writing unique intro lines can be time consuming because it requires some level of research. But this is what will allow you to finally be read and get noticed. Is it better to send 100 copy-pasted emails in one hour without any positive reply or spend one extra hour preparing engaging intro lines to get at least 10 positive replies? It's your decision to make, but I recommend you to focus on quality versus quantity. To help you, I have included a free link to download four intro line templates you can use when writing to prospects. Let me know in the comment section what intro lines stood up for you or feel free to suggest any of your favorite intro lines. On the next chapter, we will review your value proposition. You've made it so far that your prospects have opened your email and have been intrigued by your intro line. Now, it's time to demonstrate value to not only differentiate from your competitors, but also highlight why it matters to actually talk to you. And this is what we will use the body of the email for in order to make the email relevant and valuable for the person reading it. I will show you two examples of how you can demonstrate value on your emails. Let's look at it. The goal is to connect your prospects needs to the solution you offer. And it's important because you want to spark their interest and curiosity. What I recommend to do is to highlight the issue, personalize the body and provide value, and also write as if you are talking in person to make it relatable. Let's compare two value offerings now. The first one reads, allow me to take this opportunity to introduce some of our services to you. Trainings, consulting, list building, lead generation. Where the second one reads, I have a framework you can freely use that has helped companies like company name reduce sales cycles by up to three months. While the first one presents a menu and doesn't show a value add, the second one presents a solution and adds value. There's a real big difference here. Let me show you here another way to structure your value proposition. Here we have a quick example. It says, at your company, which is your own company, we help enable support. This is something you need to choose from companies just like in between brackets company name to achieve benefit. Here, obviously, the company name between brackets is the client's or the prospect's company name. And achieve benefit relates to your value proposition, or we can say the ultimate outcome your prospects are looking to achieve. Let me show you a real example with the value proposition of the Scale Lab. Our sentence will say, at the Scale Lab, we help companies just like company name to scale their sales by consistently finding new clients month after month. We understand that the people we engage with need to find clients consistently and they need to do that week after week, month after month to have a sustainable pipeline. So this is what we highlight on the email so that we can reflect for the prospect that we have done this before for other companies that are similar to theirs and we know what we are achieving. To demonstrate value, you need to have a clear idea of your prospect's pain point and how your solution will solve that pain. If you don't currently have it in one sentence, this is the homework you have to do using the framework shared on the video. On the next and final chapter, we will cover the call to action and a summary of your future email template. We're now on the last and most critical part of your email, the one element that will invite your prospects to reply to your email, hence the name call to action. Fail to have a clear call to action and you'll fail to get responses. So here I'll show you how to smartly finish your emails in order to actually get a response. Let's get on it. The goal of the call to action is to generate a positive reaction from your prospects. And the reason is clear, because you want to be able to engage with them. My recommendation to you is to be clear about what you want, present the next step, and avoid let me know and are you interested as these are what we call passive call to actions. Let's compare how the following call to actions play out. First, we have let me know if you are the right person to contact for these types of initiatives. And second, we have are you free Monday or Tuesday for a quick 10-15 minutes catch up? 
While the first one is passive and doesn't guide the prospect through next steps, the second one is clear and provide next steps, which is key to help grow through the sales funnel. Let's now summarize the SIVA framework. Subject line we have, chat next week? Question mark. Intro line we have, hi Yusuf, I loved your LinkedIn poll on sales cycle duration, shortening them seems like a strong focus at the scale up. The value here is, I have a simple framework you can freely use that has helped companies like the Scale Lab reduce sales cycles by up to three months. I thought this could prove quite beneficial. And the call to action, happy to take five, 10 minutes. Are you free Monday or Tuesday for a quick chat? This is it, a clear four step framework to write all your cold emails with. What I advise you to do now is to take the SIVA framework and to walk through your existing emails to see where you might have lacked structure or start from scratch on a new email also following the SIVA framework. If you found this free course helpful, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so we can keep you posted with upcoming tips. You can also share this free course with someone who will find it as useful. And if you'd like to get to the next level and start finding clients consistently with cold emails, we actually have a cold email mastery course that covers all you need to know from finding qualified prospects, building contact lists with valid emails in no time, creating your cold email sequence with follow-ups, as well as setting up the tools to reach out to prospects and automate the whole process. You got it. It has everything needed to make you a cold email master. I have left a link to the course on the description of this video so you can watch it for yourself. Over to you now. Thank you.